I picked up a vintage computer accessory off of eBay that I'd been wanting for a while. It's a trackball called the Kensington Turbo Mouse, and while the auction listed it as for parts of repair, these are usually pretty simple devices, and I didn't think it would take much work to fix. It's the ADB version for older Macs, but there was a PS2 model called the Expert Mouse as well. Right away, I could tell what the problem was. It's tough to move the ball. This should be very smooth, but it wasn't. This suggests a problem with the rollers inside, and indeed, they're seriously gummed up. I figured this could be an easy fix until I turned it over. Oh great, someone's been here before. The top two screws have been taken out previously. This is almost never a good sign. It means that someone has either already determined it's not fixable, or they didn't know how to fix it and possibly made it worse in the process. After getting the top cover off, I thought that perhaps they had broken one of the screw standoffs, but it turned out to be designed that way on purpose. It had to make room for the second ADB port on the back, and one of the screws was longer than the others to accommodate it. To get the circuit board out, I first needed to pry free the roller covering the screw. Then with that removed, the whole board came away from the bottom housing. The plastic bowl makes it harder to access the roller, so I took out the three screws securing it to the PCB. And yeah, these rollers are very hard to turn. They should be freewheeling, but because they're not, the ball just slides over them instead. Older trackballs like this one work like upside-down mice. The ball spins the rollers, which have evenly spaced segments on them. As each roller spins, light from an infrared LED flickers as it reflects off the segments. The light reaches a photoreceptor, and the resulting electrical signal is used to figure out how fast and in which direction the ball is turning, thus moving the cursor. In this case, the rollers are really just special bearings, and it's clear that the grease inside them has gotten sticky with age. They're sealed, so I can't take them apart, but I figured trying to drip some light machine oil inside using a needle bottle was worth a shot. I worked each bearing back and forth a number of times, and they seemed to be loosening up, but never got to be as smooth and free rolling as they needed to be. There was always some resistance. I didn't have much hope for it, but I tried running the rollers through my ultrasonic cleaner. Maybe it would be able to loosen up the old grease inside enough so I could get some fresh oil in there. But after several passes and adding more oil, it just wasn't getting any better. These bearings truly are sealed and not serviceable. The thought crossed my mind that I could just replace the bearings entirely, but to remove them would involve destroying their plastic mounting brackets. They're heat staked through the PCB. And furthermore, I'm not sure I'd be able to find new ones with the special segmented pattern on the side. Thus, my repair attempt hit a sudden dead end. This thing is beyond economical repair, especially since I only paid 20 bucks for it. This highlights an interesting thing, though. These days, everyone complains about how stuff is designed to be disposable and have a limited lifespan. But technology has actually been like that for many years. It's a perpetual battle between durability and cost. This trackball is from 1991, and I really doubt its designers thought people would still be using it decades later. Of course, it's nonetheless a bummer. The Turbo Mouse was the most popular trackball for either Macs or PCs, and regularly sold for around 100 bucks US. If you wanted to avoid the risk of a repetitive stress injury from using a mouse, it was your best option, and even offered a bit of personalization. Colored trackballs could be purchased as an accessory, but clever owners quickly realized they're the same size as those used in pool. Over time, the Turbo Mouse changed its design and added functionality like additional buttons and a scroll wheel, but more or less remained the standard in trackballs. You can still buy new ones today. I don't know if the problem with this one was a one-off, or if all of them will end up this way, but I'd wager that the latter is more likely. I'll have to do my homework the next time I go shopping for one of these. Maybe a later revision is less prone to this. But either way, whatever I end up buying, I'm gonna make sure it's not being sold for parts. 
If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Here's another episode you should check out, and as always, thanks for watching.